Don't know if we're live, don't know if we're not, as usual, using this new Facebook Live producer. I believe we are live. And as usual, it's already at 06 seconds when it pops up for me. So I believe we were live for a few seconds. Uh, this is take two. If you are sharp enough to be on with me live during take one, you got a lot of value out of that because I am going to do a more condensed version. Suddenly, I don't know, my internet just completely shut off. I believe I restarted everything, and here we are. So uh, welcome to Direct Mail Monday on a holiday here in the U.S., Memorial Day, Monday, May 25th. I was going to say 1960, but that's the day I was born. So today is, indeed, my 60th birthday, May 25th, 2020. It's also Memorial Day. And while it's a day where we have barbecues and cookouts and family and friends come over, that'll be happening here very soon, and we'll be hanging out in the pool and having fun, uh, and the uh, beaches, people go to the beach, it's the unofficial kickoff of the summer and all that, hopefully, at least in the U.S., if not everywhere, because hopefully you do it every day, but today especially ought to be taking at least a few moments here to uh, thank those, uh, the memory of those who... Uh, sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that they say they gave their lives so that we, at least here in the U.S., well, at least until a couple of months ago, uh, could have freedom. And hopefully we will have it again soon. And if you live in a a state run by an anti-Trumper, it's likely to be a long time because they'll do anything to attempt to get him out of office. Derangement reigns supreme, but I digress. Direct mail Monday, no mail today. Thankfully, we're getting a day off from the federal government today, including the post office and just about every single thing else they do. In fact, everything they do is inefficient and horribly run and terribly wasteful, and it's run by idiots because who else would even work for the federal government? There are very few people, decent people, that would ever work for the federal government, of course, which is why the whole thing is this one of the reasons the whole thing is a disaster. So I do have a few pieces, though, to write to my mailbox last, next, uh, last week. Uh, this week, and before I uh, share, well, last week, see, I'm still speaking as if we're on the weekend, because it's a three-day weekend here in the U.S. I'm saying this week, but it was last week. First one, just want to share, because I share a lot of stuff that comes from the marketing operation known as the AARP. So puts itself out as if it's an association, and of course, technically, legally, it does things that make it an association, but it's really all just thinly veiled, veiled to sell you stuff especially insurance, and it's the first time I remember, it, I'm sure, I guess it is, but it's the first time I remember in the, I don't know, seven years or so that I've been a member of the thing and, and paid attention to their marketing, because that's what I do. That's how I help my businesses and my clients' businesses make a killing with direct mail as I pay attention to it, and this is the first one I remember that isn't insurance. It's from the AARP, but it's... Uh, for wireless service. Who knew? So there you go. Just a little update on AARP's activity. It goes right in the circular file. Let's get right to this week's. I got three pieces here, three postcards of what I call done for you direct mail. This, These are pieces that are cookie cutter templates. You know, put your name here, your logo here, your phone number here, and pretty much all the rest is the same. Uh, and they're mailed out by third parties, by companies that well, especially in these cases, they do a great job of of convincing these business owners that these are great, these pieces will work fantastically, they make a lot of money. Now, caveat, uh, they're very likely to all make money, no matter how bad they are, because it's direct mail, which is still and even better uh, than in the past, uh, as far as being the most cost-effective and most effective uh, way that you can do advertising or marketing for your business. More effective now because less people are using it. Every year, more and more people turn to the Internet thinking it's a magic panacea and, ooh, social media posting is free. And sending out an email, ooh, that's free. And direct mail costs money. Yeah, right. But, of course, you get a lot better return on direct mail, not even in the same stratosphere as the returns you get on social media. Um, and so even all the top Internet companies, of course, use direct mail. There's a little hint for you. Um, but uh, the problem with doing uh, anything that is done for you is 
you you don't just delegate and forget about it. You've got to trust but verify. You've got to pay attention. You've got to know at least enough or know someone who knows enough. Go to helpfromsteve.com. Let me know, and I'll help you out. It's free consultation, and I'll likely save you a lot of money from mailing out stuff that's, that you could tweak and make it a lot better, or I'll make you a lot of money by improving it. But if you use a third party, very often they say, look, that's the way the template is, and you can't make any changes, boom, and you take it or leave it. So there's a price to be paid for not learning how this stuff works. So congratulations to you for being here and at least wanting to learn how to do marketing and advertising correctly. So, for instance, I'm a I'm excellent prey uh, as a victim for lots of types of business because I know nothing about them. So, like, you know, my first car, I had a 1973 Ford Pinto, and just about everything went wrong with it, and I was out there with screwdrivers and this and that all the time, and, you know, changing the belts and opening the carburetor and doing this and doing that, and putting on the brake pads. We did all this stuff, but, you know, engines are slightly more complicated now with all the computers in them and everything, and I, all I know, when it goes kathunk thunk you bring it in, which makes me pray for being overcharged, for having the wrong parts put in or not put in, or being told anything by an unscrupulous or just a, uh, a not excellent Auto repair shop, it's the same thing here. If you don't know anything about marketing and advertising and how to be effective with it, then you are prey for the done-for-you companies, just like me taking my car in, done for you. I don't know anything about fixing the car. I want someone else to fix it. You say, gee, I don't know about direct mail, but Steve Cypher says it's good. Let's call these third-party companies that will just use their proven template and slap my name and phone number and address and logo in there and, I'll make money, and here's the problem is you will. You just won't make as much as you should. So I'm going to help you a little out here, and I won't go into as much detail as I did on take one before my Internet just suddenly got disconnected because I already went through it already, and I don't feel like doing it again. So, But I'll give you the short version. So first of all, how can I tell that it's done for you? It's a third party. Well, here's a hint. Here I am in way too sunny and way too hot Arizona, and this week they're forecasting smashing record highs. So the highs for this time of year is generally like 104, 105 every day, and it's supposed to get up to 107, 108, 110. Smash the all-time records. Al Gore must be celebrating that at least he gets one thing right once in a while of his ridiculously wrong uh, predictions all the time. But I digress. So um, let's get to it here. We have this one is mailed from where's the camera from Dallas, Texas. So if it's mailed from Dallas by a local company to a, someone living, so by a company that's located here in the Phoenix area, to somebody living in the Phoenix area, why is it mailed from Dallas? Because it's mailed from a company that the owner or the marketing person of this ideal garage door company paid to send out their cookie cutter piece. Now, this one is generally pretty good, and hopefully it uh, makes a lot of money for them. This is the old... Uh, looking like the official notice one, right? So it's ugly and horrible. So therefore, it's nothing, of course, that any sharp business owner would put out if they're attempting to sell something. So it makes it look like we're not trying to sell something. We're just notifying you. In fact, it says right there, as a courtesy, we are reminding you. See, it's just a courtesy. And they don't go as far as to lie and say it's an official notice. They say it's an important notice. Do not the important notice. But it looks so ugly that it could be an official notice sent by uh, our ridiculously inept government, for instance, or any kind of government agency that almost never knows what they're doing and is horrible about just about everything they do, including all their notices and whatever. You can see that every letter on this entire piece is all caps, from the headline with that ugly block, black reverse text, horrible, never use it unless you're doing one of these fake official notice things. And then the RE and the savings, which, of course, are not a savings, because without this postcard, I would never be doing this garage door maintenance, so it's spending, but very smart. It makes it look like this is a courtesy. We're saving you money, because it's recommended to be done annually. Now, I've been around, as I said, today's my 60th birthday. I've been around a while, and I have never heard, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone watching this with a comment, but uh, I've never heard that, garage door maintenance is recommended to be done annually, and even if it is, 
recommended by whom? By a company that wants to get money from you or cover their butt. If it's a manufacturer who wants to cover their butt and say, yeah, we have a 10-year warranty on this, so please over-maintain it so that our, we never have to make good on our warranty. So even if, uh, like oil doesn't have to be changed every 3,000 miles, and you don't have to get a tooth cleaning every six months, and you don't have to get your garage door maintained every year, almost undoubtedly. Again, I don't know a lot about it, but that would just seem to be the case. So it's not that you're using this voucher to save $39. You're using it to spend 180 but they have all kinds of good phrasing in here. Uh, redeem this voucher and use this voucher to save. And as a courtesy, we're reminding you and blah, blah, blah. Oh, failure to properly maintain your garage door and opener can result in a voided warranty. Failure to maintain to properly maintain your garage door, I'm sure. But almost undoubtedly, that doesn't mean failure to pay someone $180 every year to look at it and go, it's fine. Uh, that's not likely going to void the warranty. So it's very cleverly awarded and well done, and Ideal is likely making a good investment here. And I love the fact that it's veteran-owned and operated, and especially as we think of veterans today, at least here in the U.S., and again, hopefully you are wherever you are on Memorial Day. So love veteran-owned businesses and uh, hope they do spectacularly well with this, which they should. Notice, by the way, it is addressed to my mom, as a lot of stuff is, even though she passed away five years ago as the administrator of her estate. Uh, long ago, I had the mail forwarded here, and she still gets uh, gets mail. So thanks, Mom. And uh, everyone can thank my departed mom for uh contribution to today's Direct Mail Monday. Okay, next is another done for you. This one mailed locally here to the Arizona area from San – where is it? San Bernardino, California. So again, that's where the company's located. The, the marketing company's located, but not the pool company. Somebody going to drive here once a week. Our pool guy was just here. He's working on the holiday. Comes every Monday, but is somebody going to drive from San Bernardino to service our pool? I don't think so. You can see here, the company's located in a town that's about 45 minutes from here. And so they mail this out, and there's a lot of just problems with this one. Again, hopefully it works. It's got to work better than not doing anything. It's just that the owner doesn't realize, unless you're watching this video, which makes you very smart, uh, that there's a lot of changes. And I'm not going to get into all of them, but if you're doing anything like this, you want to go to helpfromsteve.com and, and uh, get my, uh, my full critique and help you save a lot of money and make a lot of money. First of all, you've got a picture here of a commercial, some kind of public pool. Nobody has a... 10,000 million square foot pool, whatever that is, at their home that I know of. If you had such a big pool, it wouldn't be ugly like this, but ugly pool. It would have a nice deck and waterfalls and all kinds of stuff. So uh, maybe they're, you know, they're going after commercial pool service, but then that's not the the photo you send to homes, right? And then, of course, you don't put the name of your company at the top and your phone number. Nobody gives a crap that your name is called Daybreak Pools. Who cares? It doesn't get me to call you, does it? Oh, Daybreak Pools. Well, geez, then I just have to call. I have to give them their money because their name is Daybreak. Uh, so that's pretty dumb. Uh, and on and on. I mean, this is horrible. Look at this reverse pool tile type of thing where you, it's not an illusion. It's not that you just can barely read it in the camera. I can barely read it holding it in my hand. And that's where their offer is. $65 for this, a month, 95 a month for that. Like, you want to make that a little easier to read, or maybe you don't. If it's not a great deal, you probably want to put it in the reverse. So maybe the, the, the marketing company said, okay, Daybreak Pool owner, do you have like an unbelievable, irresistible offer like the middle letter of the WOW strategy that Steve Cypress put together and is the founder of, the O standing for the irresistible offer? Oh, no, you have a crappy offer? Oh, well, then we'll make it hard to read <laughs> because it's not going to get anyone to call. Hopefully, they'll just call because, crap, my last pool guy didn't show up. I'll just call anybody. Oh, look, a postcard came. So this is uh, really poorly done, and uh, it's got some bad bullet points. At least it does one thing here. It uses the most powerful word in marketing, which we touched on and taught about last Direct Mail Monday. They use the word free. Ask how to get free filter cleans. Should have put a value.
sell you on that to get me to call and save a thousand dollars a year or something like that might get me to call but that one was horrible uh, again still likely better than nothing and this one's pretty decent this again third party it's mailed from where's the camera there it is from las vegas nevada about a four hour four or five hour drive away but again not really mailed by this local company although now i take it back maybe because check it out this company's logo says didn't notice that they're in nevada california and arizona or is it nevada i always forget how you pronounce it these days so maybe it is mailed from their headquarters who knew uh and this one's the best of all so if anyone i thought would be a done for you a third party a marketing company knows what they're doing it'd be this one because this one's real good um again it's made to look generic and ugly so you think they're not selling you anything uh because look at it it's black on yellow it's just ugly black on yellow. it's oversized very smart they can fit more selling stuff the other two being smaller postcards, big mistake, a lot less space to sell and to get attention and to stick out in the mailbox. Um, and so they have, uh, just like the other couple, at least one that I saw, the deadline is way too far in advance, a month ahead. That's just crazy. Uh, you're telling me subconsciously, at least, don't take action on this right now. You've got plenty of time. And with all the distractions we have nowadays, a thousand channels to watch and 4,000 Facebook posts and Twitter posts flying by me all day long or whatever and mail arriving every day and the phone ringing and emails coming in and I just get distracted and I'm not taking action. So you got to say it's much quicker. At least they do a, a attempt at a little more urgency by telling you while supplies last. 30 to 70% off these, these serious discounts on these uh, – closeouts on certain models and they're very smart to not list the models so it sounds like gee you know it's a once a year cleaning out the warehouse whatever we have around oh yeah there it is overstocked inventory overstocked inventory so we just got a bunch of stuff we got to get rid of and so while supplies last you get a great deal now on the other side they don't say while supplies last for some reason they say until supplies last Valid until supplies last? You know, I'm not an English teacher, although my mom was, and I took English for years. Uh, that doesn't seem to be proper English. Valid only until supplies last. Maybe until supplies run out, but I really think it means valid only only while supplies last. But anyway, I digress again, and if it works, it works. And sometimes typos or using the wrong word like that helps as an involvement device. I read it two, three, four times, valid only until, Bob, did it really say that? Well, now I'm holding it in my hand longer. I'm staring at it longer. Maybe even I feel the need somehow to see if I can spot some more typos. The the perfectionist, the, the, the over-analytical person who says, man, that's a mistake. Let's see if I can, well, now they're going to read the thing. So sometimes uh, mistakes work to your advantage. You never know. It's why you test anything. But, you know, good job on this one. Serious discounts. They use that twice. Serious discounts up to 30 to 70 percent off. And that's the headline. The other side, serious discounts. They do a lot of things right. In fact, yeah, they don't even have the name of the company on this side. Because the name of the company, unless you've put millions and millions or billions of dollars behind it, is meaningless. To the recipient, nobody cares what the name of the company is. They care what's in it for them. And the name of your company, Joe's Plumbing, is not in it for them, which, by the way, is a glaring mistake on here, this ridiculously dumb website. Egotistical website, Silver State. So it's S-S-R-F-G, which probably means Silver State Refrigeration. Uh, how terrible is that? I did look it up before I came on to do this, and I looked up the website AC Closeout. That's the headline here, Air Conditioning Closeout. ACClosout.com, available. You might want to invest the 10 bucks if you're going to mail this out instead of put SSRFG in all small letters. No one knows what the hell that's not memorable. doesn't mean anything. It's short, which is good, but 
SSR of Job. What the hell? What is that? You could have put acclosout.com and then really got me to think this is some kind of closeout. This is some special once-in-a-lifetime thing. I better take advantage. So uh, overall, this did the best job of all of them for many reasons. And again, if you want a critique of your particular piece to either save you money so you don't mail something out that's absolutely horrible and won't make you any money or lose you money, or uh, you want to get some help to tweak it a little bit, improve it, and make you a lot of money, or a combination of both, best of all, uh, head over to helpfromsteve.com and I'll help you out. Not today, because now I am about to go join my beautiful wife, Michelle, who is making the arrangements. We have friends and family coming over. We're going to have a barbecue, cookout, hangout, dip in the pool, enjoy the rest of the holiday, which also happens to be my birthday. So thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thanks, everyone, watching on the replay, and I will catch you tomorrow. On Topical Tuesday, that's the one day a week, although can't help it nowadays, where I pull something out of the news, teach a business lesson about it, because there's so much frustrating stuff in the news ever since a couple of months ago when small business owners all around the country were declared second-class citizens. We don't give a crap if you go bankrupt. We don't give a crap if you can't do what you love and have no hobby now because you don't can't run your own business even though your competitors can just because the government likes them they're a big business big government big business love each other and they hate small business and it's never been more evident than now so i feel for all the small business owners out there that have been getting crapped on more than ever i mean how can you get more crapped on than you're out of business we're just closing you down for an un foreseen amount of time in some of these anti-trumper states just unbelievable but i will share something topical maybe that maybe something else tomorrow on topical tuesday anyway enjoy the rest of your holiday thanks for watching catch you tomorrow over and out bye-bye